Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh, became the first royal to visit Ukraine since the outbreak of war with Russia, but has since dismissed comments that called her brave. Sophie Wessex has candidly dismissed comments calling her brave after she became the first royal to visit Ukraine since the outbreak of war with Russia. The Duchess of Edinburgh visited the country back in April, when she traveled around the suburbs of Kyiv just as a Russian advance on the city war turned back. During her visit, Sophie took the time to speak to victims of wartime sexual assault and heard firsthand about the lasting impact on survivors. However since her return, the Duchess has dismissed comments from fans that claimed she was brave for going, as she candidly opened up in a diary for the Sunday Times about her experience. Since returning to the UK, many people have said how brave or courageous I was for going, the Duchess of Edinburgh, 59, wrote, before adding, I am neither. The brave people are those who have endured extreme violence and survived. Although Sophie was the first royal to visit Ukraine since the war began, it was far from her first time visiting a conflict zone as she explained, this was not my first time in a conflict zone. I have traveled to countries affected by war including South Sudan, Kosovo, Iraq, Colombia, Ethiopia and the Democratic Republic of Congo, in the hope that I can help draw attention to and encourage greater support for survivors of conflict-related sexual violence. Sophie's diary revealed that since Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, a total of 169 cases of conflict-related sexual violence have been reported. However, the royal warned that these figures are likely just the tip of the iceberg due to under-reporting, reports the Mirror. In her damning critique of wartime violence, Sophie characterized sexual violence as a weapon requiring no training, no investment and one that is deployed globally. Through her diary entries, the Duchess aimed to shed light on the issue of sexual violence during conflicts and inspire more victims to seek the help they need. History is littered with reports of women falling prey to advancing and occupying armies, and it still exists in modern warfare. Historically, this has often been viewed as a casualty or symptom of war, rather than a deliberate tactic to overpower, she stated. It is only more recently that increased recognition has been given to these heinous crimes, and society has come to understand that it is used to demean, destroy and control. Despite being in Ukraine in an official capacity as a representative of the Crown, Sophie was adamant that she sought no accolades for her actions, instead hoping that efforts could be focused on survivors and resources to aid them. The courageous are those who have reported the crimes committed against them, she expressed. As we look around the world with so many current and threatening crises, my hope is that where conflict does occur more consideration is given to creating well-funded early systems of support for survivors.
Sophie's recent royal engagement follows her agreement to take on a larger role within the monarchy as King Charles and daughter-in-law Kate Middleton reduced their royal duties due to their cancer diagnoses. However, Sophie, much like her spouse Prince Edward, has been flourishing under the increased responsibility, with Edward even standing in for Charles and Queen Camilla at this year's Anzac Day.